Okay. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is uh, Professor David J. Villasuyas. Okay, uh, the date for today is uh, July 9, 2024, and the time is around 7.45 p.m. Okay, uh, life must go on. Okay, no matter what. Uh, my topic for this evening will be a continuation of my long video format, uh, DC Circuit. And uh, we are now in, I am now on lesson number 10. Okay, let's proceed. The title of the subject matter for tonight will be DC Circuit lesson number 12. And the title is actually Chicken lesson number, sorry for this one, 11. Answer. Uh, <coughs> lesson number 12 is actually the checking uh, lesson for lesson number uh, 11 because lesson number 11 is actually a Thevenin's theorem solution for a given circuit that was like this. Okay. Uh, let's try to bring out the figure of the original problem number 11. The original figure for number 11 is this one. Uh, these are the parameters. Okay. So by using the Thevenin's theorem solution from lesson number 11, okay, I, I would like to bring it out because uh, this will be the basis of our the so called uh, solution for uh, this lesson number 12. After taking the Thevenin's equivalent of this one, oh, this is just a, what you call this, a plasma. Uh, we are given ETH in series with RTH, and this should be connected to the 8 ohm load, and which the current will be the one we are looking for, okay? So from the Thevenin solution, we have solved that ETH is 8 volts, RTH is 20 ohms, then we try to reconnect the 8 ohm load and uh, from previous lesson number 11 what comes out for the current passing here is actually 0.285 amperes it is this so to check the validity of, validity of this if it is uh, correct or not because uh, I haven't presented any other uh, solution uh, other than this one Okay, we'll try to check the validity of this if this is really the correct answer by using the so-called total resistance, total resistance, or the so-called conventional method. The conventional method is just a concept on the so-called uh, uh, series parallel combination. We'll try to simplify the given circuit by using the total resistance method, meaning we'll try to solve first for the total resistance of this one okay so we could compute for the total current okay after com the computation of the total current we could compute for the current passing through this 6 ohm load here so if we try to solve for the current passing through the 8 ohm load okay from the figure that I have presented it will just be simply the difference of the total current minus the current passing here and that will be 0.25 amperes oh that's the only way how we could check the validity of the Thevenin's theorem solution okay and to start the solution uh, like what I said it is the total resistance method total resistance meaning uh, we'll try to simplify first the given circuit we'll try to compute for R total R total because if we could compute for R total we could compute for I total and if we could compute for I total we could compute for the current passing through the 6 ohm load here so in the computation of the current passing through the 8 ohm load it will just be simply the difference as simple as one. Well. okay so if we try to bring out the total resistance or the conventional method uh, we'll try to simplify first the given circuit uh, this portion of the circuit here, 4, 8, and 12, uh, they are all in series. Right? The current passing through this 4 ohm, 8 ohm, and 12, 
will be the same. So they are acting like uh, they are in series. So if we try to take the single equivalent of this three here, uh, that will be represented by RE1. So it will be 4 plus 8 plus 12, and this will be 24 ohm. So the single equivalent of this one, the single equivalent will be 24 ohms. Right? And the single equivalent, uh, we are now using the concept of series parallel, right? So this 24 will now be in parallel with this one. Their currents are different, so they are actually in parallel. And if we try to take the single equivalent of the 6 and the single equivalent of this 4, 8, and 12, uh, there are only two, right? So 6 and 24 are in parallel. So R82 will be the product all over the sum. And we could compute that <coughs> the single equivalent of this portion here is actually 4.8 ohms. So it seems we are, we are now given a circuit that is something like this. Right? This is uh, 2 ohms. This is 10 ohms. And this is 4.8. Uh, this is now the single equivalent of this portion here. Okay, and this is 24. Like what I said, our uh, checking for, for C solution is actually the total resistance method. So actually, as we compute for RE1, RE2, we are approaching the total, so-called total resistance of the total circuit. That's why I, I named the solution total resistance or con conventional method solution. Okay, so after taking the compressed equivalent of this one, what comes out is 4.8. So if we try to compute for the total resistance now of the circuit, it will be these two here, plus 4, 4.8, plus that. And what comes out is 16.8 ohms. And this is the so-called total resistance of the entire circuit. That's why I named the solution total resistance method, right? So it seems uh, we are now given a simple uh, circuit in which uh, the single equivalent resistance is, uh, this is R total, and this is 4.8 ohms. This is 24, and this will now be I total. We simplified the circuit already after compressing the resistances. So if we try to compute for the total current, it will be 24 divided by 4.8. 20 16.8 16.8 16.8 and what will come out will be 1.42 amperes so by using the total resistance method we have computed that the total current drawn by all these resistances is 1.42 amperes the total current coming from this 24 volts is 1.42 amperes okay and to simplify the solution, uh, <coughs> uh, we'll try to, what you call this, uh, compute for the voltage across the 6 ohm load. Because if we could compute for the voltage across the 6 ohm load, we could compute for the current passing through this. And the equation will be the voltage across the 6 ohm load will be the total applied voltage minus the voltage trap here minus the voltage start here. That's the voltage across this. So it will be... Uh, <coughs> uh, this current, this is still 1.428 amperes. Okay? Meaning the voltage across this will be 24 volts minus the voltage start here, minus the voltage start here. Okay? So that will be 24, 1.428, same current passing through the 2 ohm and 10 ohms. So I just took the sum of 2 plus 10. And if we try to subtract this one, it will be 6.86 volt. Meaning to say, if we try to get our voltmeter and then we place it here, the voltage across this 6 ohm load is actually 6.86 volts. 
And since we know the voltage across this section load from the equation voltage equal to IR, I now will be voltage over R. Right? So that will be 6.86. Considering the section load over 6. And the current drawn by the section load is 1.143 amperes. Okay? And by using the disjunction here, okay, current entering should be equal to current leaving, that is 1.143, plus the current uh, passing through the atom load, and which we do not do for the meantime. Actually, uh, this is unknown for the meantime, right? Okay. So, the current passing through the atom load will be the total current minus 1.143. So I with the subscript 8 ohms, the one we are looking for, will be the total current minus the current passing through the 6 ohm load. And that will be 1.428 minus 1.143. And this is 0.285 amperes. So this is uh, 0 0.285 amperes. Same as this one. So, lesson number 11, in which the solution is Stevenson's Turing solution, was correct. It was checked by using the to so called total resistance or the conventional method of solution. Because, as per our computation, the current passing through this atom load is 0.285 amperes. From the previous solution, 0.285 amperes, they are the same. Hallelujah. Okay, uh, good evening from Los Angeles. This is Professor David Gilder.